Welcome to Bridge to the Atlantic. We are your host, music web designer, Ross Barber, owner of Electric Kiwi, where we create awesome custom websites for bands, artists, and musicians. And I'm award-winning independent singer-songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, and indie filmmaker, Marciana Valley. This week, we're excited to welcome multi-award-winning singer-songwriter, Stacey Clark, to the show. To date, Stacey has released four EPs and four full-length albums, and has guest appearances on records by Jax Mannequin and Deluxe under her belt. Her music can be heard on TV shows such as One Tree Hill, The Real L Word, The Hills, and Keeping Up with the Kardashians. In addition to being an accomplished performer and songwriter, Stacey has also donated her time, music, design, and raised funds for charities including To Write Love in Her Arms, Habitat for Humanity, and PETA. We're looking forward to hearing Stacy's story as well as the advice she'd offer to fellow musicians. Hi, Stacy. Hi. Welcome hey. to our crazy little world we've created Hello. called Bridge Atlantic. <laughs> <laughs> let's start. Let's start things off right away. Um, hopefully, awkwardly, by asking you three things about yourself that everyone should know. Okay. And go. <laughs> um. Let's see. I'm gluten intolerant. <laughs> Uh, no tolerance for that gluten. I have a baby. And What's your baby's name? Dakota. Oh, I like that. And I love creating. I mean, obviously I love creating, but I love comedy, especially like improv. I took improv the past two years. I studied at Upright Citizens Brigade, which is a school started by Amy Poehler. And I've taken a couple improv classes and a um, screenwriting class just because I wanted to not only create music, but then also all the funny, crazy stuff that happens in my life. Sometimes I feel like I live in a comedy, you know, because like stuff happens that normal. Not, it's like, <laughs> I, I can't talk. It's <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can't usually either. So, no, it's okay. Like, it's just like really funny. Like I feel like I'm in a TV show sometimes. Like you can't make up the things that happen to me. <laughs> so let's go back to uh, 2008 for a second. Uh, you guested on Jack's Mannequin's, uh, so Andrew Mann's Jack's Mannequin uh, second album, which was The Glass Passenger, and uh, you guested on songs Crashing and Spinning, I believe. And the reason I'm mentioning this, besides that, the fact that that's awesome, um, my wife and I, before she was my wife, when we were uh, just still dating and you're courting her. Uh, when I was courting, you know, we were already seven years. Well, we started dating when we were fifteen, and I'm thirty now. So we were we were pretty we were a pr- few wow. years into it. Um, True love. I think so. <laughs> Two kids in, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we we traveled to Buffalo. We're just from the Toronto area, so it's not a big deal to go to Buffalo to watch Jack's Mannequin live. Oh, you, you saw opened. me. Oh my yeah, god. We spoke. You don't remember this. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, I met you. This is why I even know you right now because I met you. You opened. You were wonderful, and uh, we had spoken for a little bit after. And uh, you were talking to me about you. Were, you were we were trying to sell your music to me, which was hilarious because oh, yeah. this is what we do as artists. I do the same thing, and you were like, "Yeah, yeah, um, the, the same person, the same producer that did Jack's Mannequin's album. That's who I worked with, Jim Wirt, who actually produced my debut full length album four years ago, who I ended up working with. So you know, Jim." The point is, we did meet. We did meet uh, before and after the show, Jack's Mannequin. You were sweet. I never met you. You're, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you don't remember me. That's okay. I wasn't the one performing. I was just one of many people there. But that's when I was first introduced to you. Yeah, and uh, you're great. I loved it. You opened up just acoustically. That's uh, that's what I was doing at the time. Just up there, naked, basically, not literally, but you know, figuratively, with just you and your guitar. <laughs> I and was then, naked. Uh, yeah, actually, you I also were naked. Game. That's that's why yeah. I was like, I gotta find out who she is. <laughs> um, and of course, of course, Andrew killed it. And oh, um, but yeah, like, so that that's how. And that that was back in like 2008. So this is what seven years later. And oh, now you were on our podcast. So yeah. there you go. It's oh, so cool. you were you were nice. To, you were nice to the people talking to you, and that's important. And you never know what's gonna what's gonna happen years down the road at all, or where we're gonna be, or anything like that. And who, or I don't mean not like that, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. I, I think what you're trying to say is if Stacy was a complete bitch to you, then she probably wouldn't be on our show right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. I was just going to say, I probably wouldn't have still remembered you to have you on our show. So. Yeah. Well, no, you would, have off, remem- you would have remembered her, but for but a completely bitch, different yeah. reasons. <laughs> exactly, yeah. we're a jerk. That's so, awesome that so, you were there. That was like... Yes. Um, was, that a, was that a big show for you? Yeah, well, he's yeah. you know a really good friend of mine, and yeah. I saw that they were playing the town ballroom, and because I'm from Buffalo, I was like, okay, I was like, so why don't I play on that show so then my mom can see how well I'm doing? <laughs> <Because> <laughs> so he's like, sure, sure. 
And the funny thing is after I took my mom onto like the tour bus and everything and they had like this blow up doll and they're like, hide the doll. And it was like, it's just like a joke, obviously. But right, I'm like, right, right. Uh, I'm like, it's okay. My mom is a high school guidance counselor. She can have seen doll. She can, so, she can, she can handle yeah. it. <laughs> Yeah, but um, no, but you know what? The, this the, and besides me mentioning that to make it awkward that I remember you, but you don't remember me. Uh, besides mentioning that, I, I do want to say what? I I was really overwhelmed that night. But um, no, that's why so would you remember cool. someone just coming up and talking? You'd be really like, hey, I, I bought your CD. I'm pretty sure I bought your CD. You had an EP out there. I did buy it. Um, but uh, what was I going to say? The, the other reason I mentioned this is because Bridge Atlantic here. We, I want to mention how important it really is. I wanted this to translate how important it is to be a decent or not to be a nice person if someone's coming up to you to talk yeah. to you you know if you performed or someone wants to buy your city or, or even if they're not buying your city be a nice person be like don't be an asshole because people do remember these things even like i've seen a lot of artists over the years but you know i remember the people i've spoken to i remember the people that were nice and you know and hopefully it's the other way around when people meet me after a show you know and just be be yourself and really it really does translate and uh you know it's it's it, it, translates not just immediately you might not see the results immediately but it will translate so good on you stacy now let's move on <laughs> you've released uh, music uh, both independently and through labels right so as an artist what are the main differences i'd like to know when releasing independently versus through a label and which do you prefer well when you're an independent artist it doesn't take a year or two years to get a record that you have sitting waiting there to get out you know so like for me that's unless i I just love, you know, putting music out, like releasing it and nothing is worse than writing a song and it's just like sitting there or if it like doesn't even make the record. Now, luckily in my situations, I've always had completed records and then got record deals like off that record. So okay. I, I worked with A&Rs and stuff, but they, you know, and some songs, you know, would make the record, um, like what, for example, apples and oranges, I got a deal off that and that was done. Connect the dots. I was working with the a &R, but I pretty much was just put up in this house and literally just writing, writing, writing. And um, my producer and I picked like our favorite songs, but I kept writing so many songs. It was like really hard. Like some bumped other ones out. And that's when the a &R, you know, gave advice. And that was really cool. Um, that's okay because you already had you're already happy with a lot of the songs and they're just helping you to right break it down even more you should have right. a double album and i was really fortunate because my aunt like david fields he was just like so amazing and you know he had worked with like radiohead and bjork and and natalie bruglia and he really believed in me and just had an amazing ear and kind of gave me like confidence i mean i've always like loved writing and but when someone of that you know people believe in you it just i feel like the one thing you get from a label you know, is validation. That's the thing. Like right off the top, you're like, money. okay, then money, but it depends what kind of, you and then right. marketing and support. But again, it depends on like, you know, some labels you are told you're going to get X, Y, and Z and you don't, you know, and it can be a disappointment and other ones can be like really great. So I think, Oh, and let me clarify. I didn't mean money to the artist. I meant money for marketing, <laughs> no money to the artist. No, you <laughs> I meant can't. you get money for marketing. Yeah. I mean, I've gotten money before and then right. I've not gotten money. It just depends right. on like what deals. And so, and I think the long of the short is whoever bottom line is they're a business, you know, they're going to make money or take a percentage. And so you have to ask yourself, how much can I do for myself? And is it worth it? Like what, you know, if you want to get to that next level, then of course, you know, but at the same time, look at Macklemore, like you can earn money and selling records and booking shows on your own. And then you could take that money and put it into your own marketing. You could put it into your own radio and hire people. It's a lot more work, but you know, it's, it's tricky. The industry is like changing so much. And it's like, now it's all about, you know, YouTube stars and Vine stars or people, you know, um, I feel like it's cause they can build their fan bases like quicker. It's also oversaturated though. That's the problem. We always say it's, it's the best thing in the world that everyone can, can make and create and release art. And it's also the worst thing in the world that everyone can create, make and <laughs> release art because you know, there's no filter at all anymore and it's so oversaturated i actually recently heard someone say uh the music industry used to be where there's a closed door and if you can open that door you're one of the few people that are in there but now the door is wide open but you go in and you're one of millions of people in there you know so that's kind of the difference that has created and that's also the difference that that a label can help you kind of stand above the rest you're now part of a roster rather than one of a million you know 
I mean, that's just my outside perspective. I've never been signed to a label, so. <laughs> I, I honestly, like. <laughs> what the fuck I, do I know? <laughs> I, 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 for, like, all the, you know, when I was on Vanguard, like, a lot of things happened for me. Like, I got the iTunes single of the week, you know, and then I outsold Lady Gaga. Yes. And then radios were starting to listen. And everyone kept telling me, like, you got to have a story. And I'm like, I have plenty of stories. Okay. Like, you know, but it wasn't about, it wasn't about that. It, when they say that it means like money, like, or sales, it's all about numbers. And so when they say story, well, then I outsold Lady Gaga. So who is this girl? Then they brought me to radio. And then again, going back to my funny life. Okay. So I'm a guitar player. I do enjoy playing piano. I am not Andrew McMahon. I am not Beethoven. I, I am not wow, a piano Andrew player. Andrew McMahon, I know he's a great piano player, but <laughs> Jesus Christ. I wow. Mean, he is, <laughs> he's going to he like that. You're, you're, you guys are definitely friends. Yeah. <laughs> no, but like, you know what I mean? So, yeah, of course, really they pick White Lies, which is like four chords. And I look like I'm a like a little kid playing the piano when I perform it live. <laughs> and so that's the song I was playing for radio. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, like this is a joke. I spent, you know, 17 years learning guitar and here I am playing the piano and I look like a moron. And yeah, so. Um, such is life. Yeah, so, you know, I tried, I tried my best to impress radio, but they're probably like, oh my God, look at this girl on this piano. Like, she can't even play the piano. But anyways, <laughs> it, went, it went as good as it could. Until I was on tour and I got laryngitis. Uh, I never had laryngitis ever. And I had it. I was opening for Switchfoot in DC for this like radio show. About to play White Lies. And again, the piano is like, it's not like I could make up for it with my piano skills. And I go to sing and like nothing comes out. And there's like an audience. And I was like, okay. And I was just like, I wanted to cry. I'm like, this is everything I've been working for. And oh, nothing. Oh, God. My radio guy, he was just like, we have to cancel. This is like a disaster. And I'm just like, I can't help it. Like, I, I've never gotten laryngitis before. But when you tour nonstop and you're doing like, you know, multiple interviews a day and all this radio and it's in the fall, like, forget it. You're bound to get sick. And this little girl came up to me and she's like, I just want to give you a hug. And I was just like, oh, my oh. God. I was like, I swear to God, I can sing. I was like, I can. And I <laughs> Even though I suck at piano. <laughs> guys just bitch, but we're so nice. They're like, oh, I was just like, oh, my God. Oh. So oh my God. But, can I make you know, a request? <laughs> I really want you to write a book and I really want you to record an audio version of this book because I want to hear all these stories whenever I want, <laughs> like all the time. Like when you feel bad about yourself, you can listen to it and be like, <laughs> I that. Well, that. I, you know, I, that's not the angle I was going for, but nah. sure, sure. Yeah, <laughs> that's sure. more my angle. Ross is, yeah, exactly. Ross, is, Ross is like at his core just a sweet person. My, for me, that would be more like, okay, at least my life's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> that was that is like, you, I, the fact that you had to say to this this girl, I can sing. You <laughs> <laughs> mean offered this like I this can. support I slot that so many people would want, but you still have to defend. <laughs> I am, I, I am a singer. I, I can't sing. Oh, that's oh. I've I've never heard anything like that. Oh my god, that's amazing. Your life is amazing. Singing. Oh, Speaking and then on the radio singing. tour, a lot of people would be like, oh, you kind of remind me of Katy Perry. I'm like, yeah, except I don't have a rack. And then it was like recording. And then everyone was like, that was so funny. Like when you, you know, like I was like, what? She has an amazing body. Like, you know, we should embrace women instead of being like yeah. haters. It's like, no, I freaking, you know, and I love Taylor Swift. I think she's, I mean, she's an alien. She's like a gorgeous model, you know, writes amazing songs, like, I don't know. I just, I'm kind of jealous. I kind of want to be here. I'm like, mom, you should have took me to Nashville instead of saying, you know, go get a college education because you're a guidance <sighs> counselor. You should have she been said like. that to you? Oh, <laughs> terrible parents. <laughs> she should have oh, said, she. go for your dream, Stacy. Not like, musicians don't make money. <laughs> yeah, that's my world too, but, you know. I showed I her, well. didn't I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just kidding, mom. I love you more than anything. <laughs> So, uh, um, is there new music on the way? We all want to know. Are you working on anything new? Um, anything? I know you just had a child, um, you know, but what's going on with that? Yeah, I was busy being pregnant. And <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I just released a single, We Are the Fortunate Ones, that I actually co wrote with Andrew McMahon. It's one of my favorite songs I ever co wrote. And I worked with this really cool Danish producer called Night Sports. And so, that's just recently released. And then also Mixed Signals. Um, and those are songs I've had for a while that I've been working on. And um, 
I'm just like really excited to, you know, put those out there in the universe. And I just put it out myself because I, rather than like shopping for labels and going through the rejection acceptance, like I just said, you know what, I just want to put these out there. And so, and then I'm always writing. I've been writing for some other artists. I'm doing writing sessions. Um, and working with some really good producers and stuff like that. So name drop. We want to hear who, what you who you've been working with. There's this really cool um, Korean producer called Francis Kim. He's worked with like Kendrick Lamar and Wu Tang. And I'm working my next rap. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you actually were. Br- you, know, you know what? I'm so impressed. He's, he's real, and that's his you real. You drew but me I, into that. You, and uh, then you just. And you're also a comedian. Yeah. So <laughs> I um I've just been you know writing with him and we worked with this girl Lauren Geraldo who's a Vine star and hopefully one of the songs I wrote for her gets released and I don't know I've been writing for a bunch of different artists like CC Fry um she well, was I, w- I, w- I want to get a little more technical here because we do have a, a lot of our, our listenership is uh our musicians and this is awesome all these things you're doing are amazing but could you offer some advice to, the, to these musicians who one are seeking a label and two that want to write for somebody else and I mean more logistically, not just, you know, we, you know, we all, we should work hard, we should do all this, but how does someone, actually I want to ask, how does someone get in the position and who do they hook up with to write for other artists? Well, that's, so you said right there, who do you hook up with? So you got to, you know, got to suck a lot of dick. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I like you. I'm totally, I'm, I'm joking, but my friend, I'm married, <laughs> I'm married and I, I'm not like that, but it's funny because my friend and I were like, you know, it's really about who you sleep with. You don't really line yourself up, but because I'm obviously off the market, I'm just trying to pimp out my girlfriends. I'm like, yeah, we go to party. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm, <laughs> basically, I'm a damn. We can have a whole episode of just like non-answers. I love it. <laughs> yeah, so if you guys want to, you want me to help you, I'll be your madame. And no, okay. no, but for real, um, it's just about like networking and who you know, and your talent will shine, you know. Well, what are they looking for? What's the title? Like, what are they searching for? Who are they? Are they looking for publishers? Or are they looking for, for someone who wants to write for somebody else? So um, I guess I people kind of, you know, sought me out because they're like, oh, you can write songs and you write decent lyrics, you know, and so it's kind of challenging. Like there's a lot of people who are songwriters, but they're not, you know what I mean? It's like, clearly you can hear it on the radio, you know, it's like, um, a lot of it's political. And then there's some also like really amazing songwriters. So how I got into the situation is just through over the past, like 10 years, just meeting people and different managers and different artists and producers and people just, you know, when they work with me, they're like, wow, you can write. And I'm just like, thanks, because that's like the one thing I think I can do. And my name, Clark, it means writer. It comes from the surname. Clark. No way. Yeah. So it's kind of weird, but I guess it's like in my DNA. But so the best advice I could say is to like put yourself out there, network. When I originally started out, I would hand out my CDs like it was a business card. And so I met a lot of licensing people. And from there, you know, um, music so that's what they're looking for, looking for so music supervisors. That's to get your music in film, TV yeah, shows, everything. Yeah. And you can yeah. even get it in music libraries. But honestly, like I would steer away from music libraries because they don't like pay as much. It would be good if right. you can get in with um, music licensing house or a music supervisor or, you know, um, or if your record label, if they have like connections, but usually it's like separate. And if you consider yourself like me, like a songwriter first, then you can submit your music to publishing um, and just call them and be like, listen, I'm an artist, like, or talk to ASCAP, BMI, CSAC and be like, I really want to get more, you know, connections. I'm really working hard at this. And they also have um, conferences. Not, I'm not talking about like the expos. I mean, those can be good too, but I would, I'm talking about like actually being like, okay, I want to sign with you as cap, but what can you do for me? And they might be like, well, we have this show at Sundance or something. I've yet to get one of those, but those are, you know, if you can get into those or South by Southwest or any kind of like showcases where specifically music supervisors and TV people go, then that could really help you, you know, <clears throat> um, awesome. or in Toronto, is- like if you know, yeah. you know, you're like, oh, there's a music convention or some kind of award show, go out, like go out, look good network. You're bound to meet someone like my friend and I for Grammy week. We 
went up to this party we got invited to the party ended up being like totally lame so i was naturally like let's go get some food i'm hungry <laughs> so we went to um we were at the hotel roosevelt there's like a restaurant in there and we were just sitting in the lobby and we met like had jenna kirkman who works with like chelsea lately and they're like editor and stuff and our producer and we're just like you know it's just like cool to meet these people and you never know what's going to transpire like exactly it's got to be authentic and you got to get yeah. along but you just never you never know in, in either way in either side of it who's going to help somebody out down the road yeah and for example like with andrew mcmahon it's like i met him through a nonprofit. like he had had leukemia i had immunity disorder mm -hmm. and at the time i had helped start this music saves lives with my old manager and I had just met him and you know he listened to my music and then he was starting a label and interested and so he's like you know come over like play your songs I didn't think I was gonna play my song so again I didn't bring my guitar and he's like oh I have this piano and I'm like oh my god oh, oh, I'm not not here we thing. go <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I don't really play the piano and play piano <laughs> yeah yeah so I was like uh. and then I played my little chopsticks and you know and that, but that's how I met him, and he was like... It's because you did it, though, and because you... But he was, like, doing out. this label, you know, and then... and But I ended up going with another one, but needless to say, like, he's still been so supportive and so helpful, and just, like, through that friendship has helped me meet, um, you know, publicity and, like, other people, and then Jeff Iroff, who used to run, like, Warner Brothers from um, Shangri-La, he had signed me and that was huge validation because he worked with like the Beatles and Rolling Stones, Fiona Apple, Regina Spector. And then from there I got on Vanguard. So it's like, you never know like where that one, one person believing in you will take you, but you can start anywhere. I mean, or stay with one person. It's just like, it's like chess. You can decide what you want to do and there's going to be mistakes. Like have I made poor decisions? It's like, yes, everyone has, you know, but it's, there's no, you know, there are books. Like, in fact, I was laughing, like I have this beyond talent book that I read and I have like this music called business. And this was like back in the day, but no matter how much you read, if you're not going out there and putting yourself out there and networking or building your YouTube or creating content, it has to be one, you know, you're either going to be behind closed doors working, doing all the stuff, or you're going to put yourself physically out there. You know, it has to be one or the other. You're not going to get discovered. You know what I mean? Or you're not going to create opportunities. So unless you have an amazing manager, which, you know, that's you're like get an amazing manager. You need to get yourself out there. So right. that's what it's all about. And, you know, we always talk about this show. We mention often that, you know, most of the part of success is, uh, you know, seeing an opportunity and going with it or creating uh, uh, an atmosphere for opportunities and, it's all about opportunity. It's seeing it and going after it. You know, not, and, not, you know. No, I totally agree. It's just like putting yourself out there and constantly just like, you know, you're going to introduce yourself to people and not everyone's going to like you. Not everyone's going to like your music. Exactly. And, but you just have to know too, rejection's part of it. And in the beginning, it was really hard for me to be, you know, like I got rejected by Atlantic. I got flown out to Nashville, rejected by EMI, you know, like I got rejected by everybody, but I feel like it was like, I was too sexy. And I was like, well, that's hilarious. Cause I am like such a tomboy <laughs> or I was like, not sexy enough, you right, know? Right. And it's just like, you're going to find where you belong, even if it's the avenue you create for yourself and you just have to believe in yourself and you have to know if you're not getting rejected, then you're not trying hard enough. And once I like took that mentality, things started happening, you know? And once I just, it's like the bottom line is like, what do you want to do with your life? It's like, I want to write like that's who I am. I can't turn that off, you know, so whether, you know, and I balance working full time. I worked full time doing sales and I worked. It was very, very hard, you know, and then I would drive to L.A. at night because I live 45 minutes away from L.A. And then I would do sessions where I would just practice with my band and get like torn apart by this coach. And it only made me like better. And even though you go through a lot of messed up situations like just never put yourself in a situation where someone isn't building you up. And it's good that they're honest with you. And sometimes honesty might be like harsh or it might be, you know, but if they're, if you're like kind of getting like verbally abused or like constantly put there. down, I've been there. it's like you need to walk away because your time is too important, whether that's in a friendship or relationship mm -hmm. or your manager or music industry, you know, or a producer it's like and in the case of producer you're paying them too and if you're paying them to make you feel right. like shit about yourself <laughs> right right and Look it's elsewhere. like i 
Yeah. And I've been very fortunate. Like all the producers I've worked with have been amazing, you know, and just like so talented. And I feel like finding your right producer is everything because it's like, it's like a book. You have the words and an illustration, just like, you, you know, you have your lyrics and then you have your music, but then you have this production and it's like, my, <laughs> make it or break you, need more, it. you need more hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what if I had like 10 come up? I know, right? uh, <laughs> <More> just... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I feel like, you know, you got to put yourself out there. Don't be afraid of rejection and surround yourself with positive people who are going to be yes. honest. Yes, mm -hmm. I love it. Stacey, you have so many amazing things to say. I love it. Um, we're going to we're gonna jump into 20 questions now. We're going to do a, a really fast 20 questions here. Okay. Um, let's do it. Coffee or tea? Tea. Meat or veggies? Veggies. TV or Netflix? Netflix. Twitter or Facebook? Facebook. Yoga or yogurt? Ooh, frozen yogurt. <laughs> that was <Friends>. an option. <laughs> <laughs> Let her do what she wants with the know, yogurt. Know, know. <laughs> she wants to it, she can freeze it. I love yogi. Uh, yogi. I love yoga. <laughs> I'm a yogi. I like. Friend? Yeah, sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. What are you gonna say? I have like a love hate relationship. Like yoga is so good for you because yeah. I'm so not flexible. I'm like the girl with like four blocks that's like not sexy, <laughs> and I'm like ah. And everyone else has their like leg up, <laughs> but um, it makes you feel like very centered. That's I, that's why I do yoga. I love it. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> friends or Seinfeld? Oh, friends. Indie or major? Indie. Apples or oranges? See what we did there? Apples! <laughs> Pan Panic at the Disco or Fall Out Boy? Panic at the Disco. Canada or Scotland? Ooh. Oh, I have to say, I've never been to Scotland. Everyone says that. <laughs> and I'm Scottish, and I grew up next to Canada, so I'm going to go with Scotland you and take to, a yeah, risk. Okay. Yeah. Lennon or McCartney? Ooh. Oh, man. McCartney, I love John Lennon like more than anything, but McCartney, his, yeah, I have to go with McCartney. If it's a songwriter, yeah, I think I'm going to have to go with McCartney. <gasps> that, yeah. Sorry, I said that as a person, Lennon. I, yeah. Yeah, that's where I'm at. I, I never stop imagining. Exactly. Education or experience? Ooh, these are tough questions. <laughs> Both. <laughs> um, experience. Annie DeFranco or Tori Amos? Oh my god, you guys are killing me. Um, ooh. Man. Tori Amos. That's I would really go hard. with Tori as well. I mean, I love them both. And I've, I've actually have never seen Tori live. I have seen Annie live. But yeah, I would go with Tori as well. Little Earthquakes was like my world girl. Oh. But, but on, you know, she's from Buffalo and she's Mm. Someone I really looked up to, you know. Yeah. I had her guitar mentor, which was like oh, amazing. So, New York or Los Angeles? New York. Michael Jackson or Michael Bolton? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Michael Jackson. It, but it was close, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, Michael Bolton's pretty funny. He does, uh, he's got a good sense of humor. So. Yeah, we're hoping to get him on the show. Yeah. Celine Dion or Marilyn Manson? Celine Dion. Ricky Gervais or Ricky Martin? Ricky Gervais. Mm -hmm. Whale or kale? <laughs> I love whales, so I'm going to go with whale. Bette Midler or the Riddler? Oh, Bette Midler. And the final question, to make things awkward, keep in mind I'm also a singer-songwriter. Who knows what the future holds for us? We never know what the future holds. I just... Ross or Marcio? I'm not even going to try and pitch. <laughs> <laughs> My gosh. I was trying to do the family guy thing, you know, like, how's your book going? How's your book going? <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't. Choose. You have to pick. I can't. <laughs> you guys are both so cute and nice, so. Aww. Yeah. Oh, she picked Marcio. I can just tell. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we didn't really get a chance to talk about it, but uh, we'd love uh, you to just tell us really quickly, if you can, about your What It Takes show. I uh, just want to get that in there before we wrap up here. Yeah, so um, 
What it takes is a show I do where I interview bands on camera and then we do reenactments of funny things that happen, crazy things that happen, whether it's on the road, while touring, in the beginning of their career, behind the scenes, very kind of similar to this. And then also like inspirational. So um, basically it's a total of three minutes right now. I've been pitching it to different like networks and um, sponsors and stuff, but kind of like being an artist, I just want to like put it out there. Yeah. So interviews I've done, I just did Minus the Bear, um, Andrew McMahon in the Wilderness, Kill Paris, who changed his name after the unfortunate incident. Yeah. In, oh, okay, right. Now Kill Paris now, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Copeland, and who else? Oh, there's more. My brain stopped working. But basically, oh, Laura from The Minor Bird, she also played in Postal Service and with Bright Eyes. And Brad from Goo Goo Dolls, he actually... Um, did our pilot so i'm just i feel like really lucky because it's a cool way for me to still you know create and be involved with music but i i really love comedy as well yeah me too and, exactly and, and I'm, so, I'm not on those levels but if you ever want to have me on the show have me on the show i have a perfect yeah. idea for it i have a real fucked up fan <laughs> story no joke yeah Crazy. but that's the we thing will talk it's not about it. Yeah, it's just like, it's not just about, I just want to put it out there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of like what you guys are doing and just like um, to inspire others and tell truths. And also I feel like when you're touring a lot, like so much happens that you can't make up. And just exactly. being in this industry, it's kind of like, like you said, it's like, I feel like it's kind of like high school or college. You make a lot of cool friendships. And I'm very fortunate to have made a lot of amazing friendships where people are my friend and believe in me. So I just, yeah, I like creating. And so you could check it out. I have it on facebook.com backslash what it takes. And that's our awesome. first episode. But we're going to go check that out. We're going to go yeah. check that out. And people Definitely. can check you out at stacyclark.net. Check um, that's Stacy, just S T A C Y, no E in there. Uh, Stacy Clark on Twitter. Uh, you on Instagram? Uh, yeah, Stacy Clark loves you. Oh, okay. That's your, that's your Instagram. Loves you, L O V E S. And then yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, pro. And what's your YouTube? Um, Stacy Clark Music, I think. Yeah. Okay, and your Facebook <laughs> is uh, Stacy Clark Music as well. Yeah. Uh, definitely, everyone, go check you out. Or that was weird phrasing because you are awesome. You are uh, you are a pleasure to talk to, and you are fucking hilarious. Oh. Yeah. Now I'm working on my next solo album, and you can hear my music at marcinovelli.com. That's M-A-R-C-I-O-N-O-V-E-L-L-I.com. I've also recently released my award-winning documentary, Walking Proof, which chronicles the making of my debut solo album, and you can watch that for free at marcinovelli.com slash walking proof. Make sure to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Spotify, even though I get no money for that, <laughs> which are all slash Marciano Belly. And I'm working on websites for various artists just now. You can check out my work and my blog posts at electrickiwi.co.uk. You'll find me on Twitter and Instagram as Electric Kiwi and on Facebook, Electric Kiwi Design. This episode was brought to you by Chris Keaton Presents. Find out more about what Chris does and how he can help you at <laughs> chriskeaton.com. And if you'd like to sponsor the show, visit patreon.com slash bridge the Atlantic. And please do, if you have even a dollar to give an episode or once a month, every single bit that you uh, give on Patreon and become a sponsor of the show allows us to keep interviewing people just like Stacy here, who are awesome and positive and doing their own thing and inspiring other people to do the same. So please, no amount is too small. Thank you so much, Stacey. You were awesome. Please come back. Aww. Thank you. Yeah, I definitely want you to come back and I want you to write your book and I want your audio book and I want it within the next <laughs> six months. Thanks for watching Bridge the Atlantic. If you like what you saw, make sure to like, favorite, and most importantly, subscribe so that you don't miss each week's episode. Please feel free to leave us a comment letting us know what you think of the show. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook and subscribe to us on iTunes so that you can listen to us on the go. Thanks again for being awesome and we'll see you on next week's episode. Oh,